Hi, um, thanks for joining me. This is our uh, Demi Daily Deep Dive with DBJ, and today we will talk um, all things futurism and post scarcity in the eclipse phase world or um, transhuman world in which you prefer to game. Um, so we're going to talk um, post scarcity and what that means. And is there a way for us to use that in um, transhumanism in a, a post human uh, futuristic games? So uh, some of you may have heard of uh, post-scarcity, and it may be uh, written in the gaming books, but what does that mean? How does that look in a gaming setting? So let's go into a little bit of, of uh, the definition and then how we can use and abuse that. All right. Um, in general, and like I say, I'm an armchair uh, study of this. Um, I will say in the notes below, you will find... Um, a very excellent, um, if not <laughs> mandatory listen or view, um, YouTuber. Uh, the channel is known as Science and Futurism with Isaac Arthur. Uh, if you don't know, you should know. So link is below. Hey, we're in a full metal state. Um, yeah, I'm just giving out some information. We're going to talk about post-scarcity and how to use it in the eclipse phase. Um, uh, yeah, this is my usual uh, eclipse, eclipse phase Friday on uh, at, uh, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the States. Um, uh, uh, Isaac Arthur, uh, Science of Futurism with uh, Isaac Arthur uh, is great. He does have a self-admitted um, verbal tick, a um, speech impediment. If you are anyone that I know is reasonable, and I know all of you are, uh, doesn't matter. Take a listen. It's excellent content. Uh, if you have any interest in this in general, um, yes, he does have an interest in role playing games, but he may mainly talks science and such. Let's get back to it. Post scarcity. Post scarcity in general um, is the idea that we're in a future where um, technologically and um, resource wise, all human needs are met. Humanity's needs are met. Now, th that's a bit vague, um, literally based on where you're at and what you can do. So let's have, I'm thinking there's probably three categories of this, and then we can expand on that later. Um, so I'll say the first category is something similar to what's known as a UBI, Universal Basic Income. And in a post-scarcity world, what that would mean is that the very basics of human needs are met. So maybe those living in a habitat or a dome city or a spindle or an O'Neill cylinder somewhere out in the, in the uh, solar system, their housing, their food, um, very basic um uh, clothing and entertainment is all met and so that they do not need to wow how, how to say this without being very political that without them doing anything they could just sit at home forever and they would still have a place to eat i mean they would have still have food clothing and shelter um maybe rudimentary access to a cornucopia um a, a nanofab machine to make simple items here and there, and some furniture, uh, those kind of things, take, taking care of their uh, uh, utilities and such. Uh, that would be very basic. Um, and in many ways on a habitat, uh, most habitats can't afford to have people hanging around uh, not doing anything, but even worse than that is to have people hanging around whose needs aren't met, um, mainly because if their needs aren't met, they're either going to be a drain on others uh, without accountability, or they may go out of their way to gain those needs and take those needs from somebody else. So a, a second way of looking at post-scarcity, uh, where the resources and the needs of the people are met, is one where 
um, almost a uh, socialist society, but taken to um, taken to an extreme. And what I mean by this is that um, each individual needs are met, but they are met on an individual basis. So a person who is very artistic would have as much access to their artistry as they need. Uh, someone who is physically capable um, and an athlete would have all the needs met for them to pursue their athletic prowess. Uh, Prupru says, I think the vast majority of people will still find some kind of work or other way to strive for luxury. Oh yeah, also hi. Hey, what's up? Um, and, and here's where post-scarcity, especially in a role-playing game, comes into effect. Um, it's, I, I am under the, the, the full idea that if people's, if all people's needs are met, there would still be something called work and something to strive for. Um, as Prue said in, in, the, in the comment, there's like air quotes, like luxury. And I think people will still want to achieve certain things, whether it's um, access to particular goods. So for example, a community could say, okay, here are your basic needs, but if you want this these better items, these better services, these, you know, you, you, you get a one bedroom, but if you want a three bedroom um, haven, you must work for it. But I think the definition of work might be different. Uh, so let's take an example for ourselves today. Uh, we have uh, crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Patreon, um, uh, Super Chats, and those kind of things, Base, uh, Indiegogo, um, and those services, in many ways, those individuals are still working, air quotes, but people are supporting what they do through like a tip jar service. But just imagine if everyone was able to both earn and achieve things through this tip jar service. And that's what I'm thinking um, the second type of post-scarcity um, thing would be. The individuals working wouldn't consider it work. They're pursuing what it is that they enjoy. Others are just supporting them. Each other person is supporting them in what they do. Uh, Prue Prue says, I agree. There will also still be social ladder and nepotism. Um, the social ladder aspect is would be huge. You, oh, man. I, I, sorry, guys. I know. Hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, I, I saw it buffering. OK, um, the social ladder thing, I think, would be huge um, because no matter how much it, if everyone is given something equal, people would still divide themselves along social lines, whether it's um, whether it's belonging to a clique or a group or a faction, whether it's um, people who feel that they're smarter than each other, more physically attractive, more physically capable, strong, quick, fast, athletic, um, whether they're brilliant or not, whether someone is knows more about information that others don't, whether they are scientists, whether they're investigators. Um, um, social, social ladderism for its own sake. Some people are just very good at manipulating the social strata and saying, hey, I am at a tier above you because I say I'm at a tier above you. Similar to um, the fashion industry, the, um, the fine arts, whether it's uh, in the ballet and, and um, dance and theater and such, uh, there's this, the, 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 the fine arts industry is completely um, based on the idea that there is this um, higher level of artistic appreciation and you may or may not be part of that. Um, also, also there's the idea that um, in a, a post-scarcity world, the, uh, let me just describe this third part to you. P 
people may choose instead to voluntarily uh, give up some of what they want for the greater good in a post-scarcity world. Um, for example, you may have people, it's not that the there's a higher power making things you know, socialist and giving everyone everything. It could be that people are choosing to, they are choosing to live psychologically um, abundant, not physically abundant. Uh, what I mean by that is um, implants, virtual reality, um, uh, breeding amongst themselves, um, drugs, uh, these things may be covering up or used to filter out the worst parts of society. So an example would be um, maybe life is a little bit difficult, but the the lower strata have um, easy access or free access to a, um, a VR world. And in the VR world, they're able to pursue things that they want, even though their physical world, they may live um, in small typed cramped spaces. And so for very short periods of time, they have a very hard life, but then they can delve into like a virtual reality world or um, they, they activate a chip that makes them happy to work hard um, or the, the working conditions are really tough and they use work to earn credit so that they can in, um, engage in a VR world. Now, um, as I said, this is a voluntary social thing. If, if you're talking more of like a, a fascist regime where they force everyone to be, to basically get chips to be happy that they're working hard. I'm not talking about like a, like a, like a um, neurological uh, slavery, which would be something else. I'm talking about people who voluntarily choose like, um, like in the movie Equilibrium, everyone's choosing to stop, you know, periodically and take their um their uh, it wasn't called equilibrium it was called um uh protism anyway uh you know if people choose to take a, a drug that equalizes their emotional status or they choose to go into a virtual reality that's what i mean by post-scarcity so all right let's get into the role-playing part let's come up with some um a ton of ideas all right how about the idea that um, what one of the questions I have in the notes is what do criminals want if all of their needs are met? Well, um, you have people who want to achieve something and then you have those who want to tear down others. The tearing down others part goes back to the uh, the socialism and the nepotism and the 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 cliques, the factions, the the people who are hyper aware of I am at a higher or lower status than somebody else, and so you're going to have criminals who want to um, embarrass others to cast a light that's going to make someone else look bad, um, to want to expose others' weaknesses. And to um, just in general um, tear down someone else socially, right? Now, on an emotional level, some people might want to do that just because out of anger or jealousy or pride or 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 just general greed and that kind of thing. But you may also have criminals whose job it is um, almost a mimetic assassin. Right. So not a physical assassin where someone assaults someone, but instead a mimetic assassin may be someone who um, sows discord in someone else. So uh, uh, let's go to a specific example. Um, an individual runs a um, theater group that combines um, physical dance and Thing, maybe some comedy with uh, virtual reality, as well as um, using techniques where they have re-sleeved actors and they are very popular. Um, a rival hires a mimetic assassin, and that mimetic assassin is there to put out, um, in air quotes, um, fake news, um, ideas where uh, people to generate um, artificial dissent 
the discord about what this individual is doing. Uh, Drew Murray says, ideological differences can cause rifts. Some groups therein not having access to some resources. This is where smuggling and stealing can come in. Also, love this idea of a mimetic assassin. Yes, and here, here's the strange thing. Let's go back to um, the previous episode where we talked about uh, blueprints. You know, instead of people stealing and destroying um, physical resources, what they're doing is they're stealing the ability to create those resources. So um, stealing the blueprints to specific fine art, um, particular type of fashion. Uh, there was uh, something mentioned in the, in the chat last time about the fact that when you're trying, when a machine is trying to stack trillions upon trillions of molecular bonds, together, one simple mistake <laughs> can can ruin it. So excellent blueprints, someone who is able to construct a blueprint that is um that makes something that is flawless or nearly flawless is very valuable and someone may want to steal that. Um side note, game wise, okay, just just hear me out because I, I I know I get distracted, but all right. Um get a blueprint in your game and number it from one to five. So when a player acquires a blueprint, number it from one to five, one is best, five is worst. Then when they go to a machine, a nanofab, a, a cornucopia, a 3D printing machine, number each printing machine from one to five, one being the best, five being the worst, or say black market, right? So blueprint, one to five, one is um, elite status, five is black market. And the same thing for a blueprint machine, printing machine, one is um, elite, uh, you know, royal, rich uh, status, expensive luxury status, five would be black market. Add them together. So if someone has a blueprint that's a number three, they go to print it out in a um, black market printer at five, that's an 8% chance that item will have um, a flaw, a, a mistake in it. That, that would be an example to use. So adding five and five would be a 10%, maximum 10% chance, and adding one and one would be 2%, that would be the smallest chance that there's a flaw or something wrong with it. 10% chance is pretty damn high. There's one in 10 chance that if you if you print out a, you know, a hover cycle that it, it won't start or it'll, you know, stall on you while you're trying to chase down a bad guy, uh, firing with your, you know, flechette weapon or something like that. Um, so anyway, Let's get back to post-scarcity. All right, so you can steal, destroy um, blueprints, and that could be in, in and of itself um, an adventure. So the players may be tasked with finding and stealing blueprints. They may be tasked with copying blueprints. Um, they may be investigators hunting for others. To talk about the mimetic assassin, um, this person would also be one who, um, not just embarrasses someone, but creates such discord that they leave in their wake um, crowds of people and investigators and guards and police that would go after, say, the player characters. So, for example, um, the player characters arrive on a habitat. They're supposed to be... Um, a great gala involved. The mimetic assassin sets seeds so that um, the guards will be looking for who is ever a member of Firewall, let's say. And the player characters have to hunt down these this mimetic assassin. Um, Vlad 1M, a 4RA, which I'm sure there's a way to pronounce it. Um, I thought it would be something like a level three printer can only print blueprints of quality three, four, and five, and then a, a two and one blueprints couldn't be made with a level three blueprint, which perfectly makes sense, right? So, um, for example, like maybe a, a level five blueprint is such poor quality that it couldn't bypass the, 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 the quality of the printer, or maybe um, it is the blueprint might be made in such a way, let's say it's a copy of a copy, right? And so there's copy protection. So a level one blueprinter would say, well, look, I'm, I'm not printing, you know, level twos or threes or vice versa, right? So a level five blueprint, however you want to do it, wouldn't print the other levels because 
um, it knows that it's a copy of a copy and that the quality itself will be bad or um, it, it does it as a safety measure because to prevent theft of these ideas. Um, also, there, there could be the idea in a post-scarcity world where um, we're having knock off uh, air quotes luxury items might be really bad. Right, so there may be a way to detect that you have a copy of a copy of um, a piece of art, uh, furniture, clothing, um, you know, like like um, you know, stealing um, videos and movies or VR worlds. It it may be a faux pas in this particular um, location to have a copy of a copy and have it stolen on the black market. Uh, whereas maybe somewhere else in the outer rim, uh, stealing that stuff may be cool. So the player characters could be thieves that go into the um, inner world, um, uh, the inner circle of the asteroid belt, which would be the asteroid belt, Mars, and and Luna, and Earth's area of you know Venus, Mercury, stealing or copying Zoxing blueprints and then taking them out to the outer rim and people paying um, a premium because maybe they don't have the resources or um, uh, intelligence resources to create these complex VR worlds. But making a copy sure would, would be good. And so that could be an adventure in and of itself, um, especially if the, the idea that there's a, a great penalty for having copied materials and stealing them um, to another place. Also, in a post-scarcity world, um, you will have individuals who, like, what are you trying to achieve? And people may be for or against a greater achievement. So for example, um, a habitat may be growing large for its population. And there may be a, um, socio-political leader who wants to separate and wants to take 10,000 or 20,000 out of the 50,000 people who live in a habitat and move somewhere else. Well, th that means they're going to have to use a lot of resources. They're going to, the population's going to have a drop in um, brain power and they want to take these other individuals to someplace else. Uh, Drew Murray says, oh, elaborate copy protection could be circumvented by older, rarer technology that's outlawed. Yes, absolutely. And ju just in our time, if you have an older phone, it, it may not be able to run certain apps, right? Or um, let's go back further. Uh, if I, I'm an old head, so I remember floppy disks. You know, if you had um, an operating system that was advanced, it could or could not run something older, or you may have a floppy disk that had a version that could break copy protection that today we, we just take for granted. Oh, well, we know it's protected. There's no way to break it, to hack it. But really, in, in reality, there is a way to hack it. We've just dropped it or forgotten it. So um, imagine, if you will, let, let's think about the eclipse phase world. In the eclipse phase world, um, Earth is um, a wasteland irradiated um, for good or bad or depending on your setting. Um, it, maybe that irradiation is a lie and there are far more survivors on Earth than anything. But anyway, so Earth is this post-apocalyptic world, but the rest of the um, solar system is heavily populated. So player characters could be um, people who are out to uh, reclaimers, recoverers of a history that the rest of the, um, the rest of the um, solar system is looking for and doesn't remember. So people could come down to earth looking for canned goods, old movies, um, fashion, um, um, pieces of art that were um, not taken and removed off of earth when people um, were uh, sent off earth in cortical stacks or beamed off of earth during the downfall, right? Um, when the Titans took over, maybe people weren't able to get the you know, the Mona Lisa out of the, the Louvre or something. Um, maybe there are uh, breeds of drugs, such as, uh, you know, certain types of, um, of weed, you, you know, marijuana. Maybe there are um, 
um, certain rare types of viruses that someone wants to use as a weapon. And, you know, the common cold today might be, you, you know, um, a killer virus in the future when people have bred that out of their habitat. Um, all kinds of things could be left on earth and taken maybe, maybe a simple, um, let's say a perfume um, needs to be analyzed, blueprinted, and then that rare perfume could then be um, taken off world. Maybe gathering the old bones, the DNA of famous people can be used to create um, biomorphs. So for example, a habitat may only have three biological biomorph uh, examples, let's say. So although many people may live in a habitat, there's basically like three clone families and everyone kind of looks like everybody else. Sure, they may alter the skin tone a little bit, the hairstyles may be different, but basically everybody kind of looks the same. So uh, for survival purposes, even in a post-scarcity world, everyone is alive, but they need more genetic material to um, add to the add to the biological soup that is a habitat, and it could be just for um, for health, for the sake of the health of the community that we need this. In many ways, we need biological mistakes. Um, in our soup and so go down the earth gather the the dna of important figures or individuals or others and then bring it back which could be its own thing um also in post scarcity uh what people will always want something right so they will either want to work for it or take it from someone else and what would that thing be um that would be reputation some people want to be uh, rich and famous. Some people want to be powerful. Some people want to be respected. Uh, some people want to be honored for their art. Some people just want to pat on the back, um, want to be heard, want to be noticed. So there will be many ways people will want to not just work hard, but to achieve notoriety. And so in a, in a post-scarcity world, there may be individuals that want to scale the highest mountains and others are supporting them in their scaling the, the tallest peaks of, you know, uh, I want to, you know, s climb um, the, uh, oh, what's the mountain called? Olympus, Mons, Mons Olympus on uh, Mars by hand. Maybe that is a thing and other people support them and they're like, what would be the futuristic version of a Patreon. Um, where the, everyone is supporting what they do and others may want to stop them from doing it, to tear them down or beat them to the punch and get there first. Uh, so there may be a ton of uh, challenges, people engaging in things around the universe, um, re-entry diving, um, swimming the methane seas, um, creating the the flying in starships that are the fastest starships around. Um, maybe a uh, competition to steal something from the most secure location for no other reason than to steal it and having that broadcast um, recorded and broadcast so people can watch as different teams try to um, steal something in a heist for no other reason than just to do it. and. A team of player characters could be part of a team. They could be part of investigators to stop it. Um, or they could be the criminals themselves whose interest is no more than to gain a lot of attention to engage in something so that they become far more popular in the, you know, the global mesh, um, which in many ways is done now. We have YouTube um, personalities, podcasts, uh, people doing things and others are supporting them in what they do uh, with, with things like Super Chat and Kickstarters and Patreon and, and other methods um, so that they are paid to perform and achieve what they want. And there will also be individuals who are um, willing to 
uh, break them down to destroy them. And so player characters may be um, designated to stop them or to engage them. And why would someone want to stop someone else who's being creative? It could be that um, it could be that to stop them, uh, they are disowning, they're like disseminating um, uh, um, a, a, an ideal that is is causing controversy in a habitat. Um, Drew says, need to shoot off for something. Look forward to watching this whole thing later. Keep up the work, man, loving this content. Thanks, dude. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I have a passion for it. I just love that um, uh, other people do. I love the, the game Eclipse Phase. I don't think it gets enough love. And I love futurism. It's it's kind of like, you know, it's like my armchair uh, desire to, to get into it. So yeah. Um, yeah, there could be someone who's gaining a lot of popularity and they are sowing discord in a habitat or a dome city. Um, and because of the freedom, maybe the authorities are like, well, they're just allowed to do it. But the player characters may be hired to say, look, you gotta, you gotta shut this person down. They are, they're telling people not to go to work. They're telling people not to, we, we have an important project. We need to find this aquifer because our hab needs water sources. And um, there's limited water sources on, on Mars. And so we need at least 500 people controlling the AI machines to dig and find and use the aquifers to purify the water, get the minerals out of it. And this person is telling them not to do it. No, we need to survive. You know, we, this is something that we, we want people to desire to do. So we need to stop this person. Then again, Let's say there's a criminal who is using um, black market techniques to insert um, insert a uh, passivity into people's cortical stacks. So when someone resleeves, they are resleeving into someone who enjoys working hard and not getting rewarded for it. And so there's this like. Um, neurological slavery and the player characters may need to stop it, but the people may, the people already enjoy their status as second class citizens and may need to figure out a way to el destroy or eliminate or turn off um, this neurological slavery. So people may live in tiny little hovels and work 16 hour days and you know, work themselves to the bone, their fingers bloody, their backs broken, they're passing out, but they have a smile on their face. And that might be the worst kind. You know, imagine a cult leader that um, encourages the cult lead people to become so fanatical they're willing to kill themselves, um, kill themselves, you know, get their cortical stacks blown out, or to die in reality, you know, to turn off their cortical stacks or have them removed and then give of their lives for this cult leader. And the player characters need to stop them in this like post-scarcity world where these people are like, no, the cult leader's right. I believe in them. I, I worship them. You know, um, we, we've seen any number of history. You can just Google cult leaders and their deaths or suicides and such. So yeah. Um, there are a ton of ideas. Um, let's do a couple more and, and then I'll get out of here because I, 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 I'm i feeling a little bit of the brain drain, um, but also in post-scarcity um, adventuring, you may have um, criminal factions, criminal organizations, and let's see, how can I say this? Their job may be to work for um, other regions around the solar system and although the criminals on, let's say, the outer rim have um, are living in a post-scarcity world, those on the inner rim may not. So there may not be conflict on outside, but there may be conflict inside. So, for example, um, uh, imagine, if you will, like um, like assassins that are perfectly civil with each other on you know in a habitat on neptune like maybe they're um not extropians um oh please someone remind me of the uh the faction that is trying to um perfect themselves so like gentlemen scholars and gentlemen warriors um like samurai of old 
um, on the outer rim, they're perfectly civil with each other. Hey, man, what's going on? Nothing much. Oh, what are you doing this time? Well, I've got this project on on Luna where they want to take out this um, the faction of the Black Sun. And um, so I'm going to go there for um, a couple of months. If this might be a year project and start um, start killing off their leaders and um, uh, culling their stacks and uh, that kind of thing. You're like, oh, oh, you're you're the guy that's that Black Sun. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm actually meant, I was really uh, involved in uh, being hired to stop the person that was going to do that. I didn't know that was you. Yeah, 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 that's me. Um, so maybe I'll see you. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to stop you. Yeah, okay. Well, um, we'll, we'll see each other. Let's, let's reconvene in about um, a year's time and see how we do, man. Cause uh, you, you're not going to get over on me. Like, okay. And then they go in the inner rim and they're in Luna and stuff like that. And they're literally trying to shoot each other and kill each other where, you know, in the post scarcity version of it, they're just perfectly fine. But in a place where it isn't post scarce, um, it's perfectly acceptable acceptable to blow each other away, get re sleeved later on, and then laugh about it and shake hands together. Uh, maybe even learning from each other, like a, a mentor or a sensei. And you know, this person is a uh, very skilled. Wow, man, you! I didn't. You know, I wasn't seeing that sniper shot coming from three miles away. What a great thing you did. I mean, you almost blew my stack out. Yeah, he's like, yeah, that, that wasn't really skill. That was luck. But maybe next time, you know, maybe next time you'll see that shot coming. It's like, I don't know. You're pretty good. Um, that kind of thing. Um, also, in a post-scarcity world, especially with cortical stacks, who's to say that um, bloody and explosive and violent actions aren't done for fun. Um, let's, for example, let's say there's a popular television show um, on the mesh online um, involving the, the machinations of a, of a family and their business and they're trying to kill each other. And in this family, it's so much drama. There's, um, there are, you know, one Scorpio and he runs around with a samurai sword and the other one's name is, um, is, um, you know, Vladimir um, Lance, and he has a, a long sword that he runs around the cities, and um, they both are, you know, looking after um, uh, Adrian so and so, and you know, like basically a drama, but living out in reality in our world, over dramatized as people log in and can see through their eyes and feel what they're feeling. And they're literally, literally trying to kill each other and other innocent bystanders may be involved in it. So you have this television show where the player characters are involved in it, or maybe they're investigators to stop it. Um, but they, they know that in a reputation society, people love this show that there may be individuals that may be even hurt, harmed, or killed while this show is going on. Maybe um, Vladimir and Scorpio are having a um, a sword fight on a maglev train, and you know Vladimir is the evil one. And he's taking people by um, as hostages, and Scorpio knows that he can't kill him, so he slashes through the innocent lady and you know Vladimir himself, cutting him in half. And, and he gets a lot of ratings, even though he just killed this person. And of course, they're dodging the authorities. You know, you can get really bizarre in a post-scarcity world when people are trying to pursue what they want. Um, in, a, in a great world, people would pursue their own dreams and aspirations and desires and wouldn't harm somebody else. But what if you have psychological issues that impact on someone else? In a post scarcity world, you have yourselves. Let's go down the let's go down the rabbit hole. We've got pedophiles and sexual predators. We have serial killers and sadists. If they are allowed to engage in these things beyond, let's say, a virtual reality world, and go into the real world and in real life, the IRL, and start engaging in these things with so much, so much content. Maybe they have subscribers um, to their killing content. Maybe they have um, uh, Patreon rewards as to who they will kill next or how they would kill them. Maybe people suggest to them um, where the type of people they should attack. Maybe there's um, a group of um, 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 pedophiles that want these 
that are like fans of a particular pedophile and want them to go after particular children of famous individuals or something like that. You can go really, really dark with dark sadists. And so the player characters are out to not only stop what's going on, but to blast the cortical stacks out of the back of the heads of all of these individuals that are spread around the solar system. That would make a really cool, um, really interesting, really dark um, mission statement for everyone else um, to go around and just like, you know, cap, just, you know, cap the brains of these people who, you know, in, in, in my opinion are, are extremely harmful. But anyway, um, I'm thinking I'm going to stop it there. Um, thanks, Drew. Um, thanks, um, Vladimira. I guess it is. Uh, Pru Pru, uh, Full Metal State, um, and everyone else who sees this. Uh, yes, today is um, is uh, Eclipse Phase Friday, although I do go live on my channel um, 6 a.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. Um, so just get it. If you want to join in, get a notification. If not, doesn't matter. Um, Check the notes below. By the way, um, check out Science and Futurism with um, Isaac Arthur, all excellent series. Um, um, verbal tick, um, notwithstanding, I don't care. I love it. Um, you guys should check that out. He, I don't know this person, although he lives in central Ohio. So that, that makes us uh, um, Ohioans, uh, brothers in location. Anyway. Um, that kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> Vladimir, I hope, hope, hope that means I'm pr pronouncing it right. Thanks. Thank you very much for uh, joining in. Um, as always, love, love the, the, um, the idea of a uh, futurism and eclipse phase. Um, if you guys have any, any questions or, or subjects you want to come up with or whatever, um, I may not be able to respond, but I read every con comment and content and, um, hope you guys join later. So thank you very much for joining me. I've got to go to work because I do these things just before I go to work. So again, thank you very much. I'm DBJ and I'm out.